Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today I'm gonna sketch this big pot of chrysanthemum and the house in the distance. I think these two objects are really good juxtaposition for a good sketch. So this is my current art journal spread. I use very basic minimalistic tools to sketch, one drawing pen and two or three water brushes. And I have here is the Etcher watercolor palette and a towel for cleaning the brushes. So I'm gonna sketch the view in this space over here crossing the two pages. So first of all, I'm starting to draw a rectangular frame just so it's much easier to fit everything inside within this space, within this contained space. All right, so here, so here I had to look and kind of visualize the placement of the most important objects in this picture, which are the pot of flowers, chrysanthemum, and that house on the right hand side. So now, after visualizing the placement on the white space, I'm starting to draw the outline of the pot and the flowers cluster in outlines. And the base texture for the pot, a little bit of shade that was hatching. Okay, and now I'm starting to add the flowers inside the outline very loosely. I'm not trying to s capture every single flower on there in the correct space. Just my impression and just quickly capture it. With squiggly lines. So the drawing experience it can be much easier than imagined, especially for beginners. I think we should really see the drawing experience as relaxing and playful instead of trying to copy what's really out there. It doesn't have to match physically, but we really have to capture the spirit of the things and the scenes that we observe. That's the most important goal of drawing and painting. Okay, so after finishing drawing the pot of chrysanthemum, I'm starting to link the balcony rails in relationship to the flower pot. There's a little bit of visual measurement happening there, and this is the window frame. And the thickness of the rails. Now I'm starting to draw these vertical lines of the rails. Again, when we're drawing architectural stuff with seemingly a lot of straight lines, our drawing doesn't need to contain perfect straight lines because we're, because we're humans. We're not machines that produce perfect straight stuff. It's okay if those rails are a little bit um, bendy. These are not super perfect straight lines, but they have more life than perfect lines. Keep drawing and adding the three dimensions of these rail pieces. These are very thin, skinny prisms, stretched. So after drawing the balcony, I'm starting to connect the big tree with the balcony and also in relationship with the flower pots. Drawing using a lot of broken lines because those branches are being covered by a lot of leaves. They don't have to look that solid. And I will paint the leaves with brushes, with dotty brushstrokes. And now I'm adding this part of the house on the opposite side of the street. Instead of trying to draw a house, 
which are um, mostly covered by the uh, trees and branches. I'm only seeing basic geometric shapes using very loose lines because things in the distance, they don't have to have a very clear outlines and definitions. Keep adding more house forms and the trees. Now you can kind of tell juxtaposition. This tree is much smaller than the pot of flowers. That makes this image very strong with contrast in sizes. And also shows, gives a sense of distance. Just keep adding those details that I see. So when I'm drawing, I don't need to know what I'm really drawing. I'm only focusing on the shapes and forms. So I'm just focusing on the definition of the most important objects in the scenery, like the flower pots, the houses, and the form of the, of the trees. And that's it. I don't worry that much about the other little details. Just using very um, relaxing squiggly lines to show the texture of the trees and bushes. And now I'm adding this house finally on the other side of the street. The rooftop shapes, the chimney here. the different angles, just making up the different parts of this house, the windows. So when we're drawing houses, just pay attention to the, uh, to the angles. Okay, so now I'm drawing the fence right outside the house. Again, this is like parallel to that side of the house. And then finishing drawing this side of the house. As you can see, this house is a really complex shape of a square cube with a cone roof. Okay, and just adding more details in the space of the rails. It's really interesting to draw inside these little spaces of the rails. Just make sure I didn't miss any detail in between the rails. Now I'm drawing the sidewalk. These lines are really important. This part of the, uh, the car, this side of the sidewalk. The sidewalk lines are really important to define space. Okay, so as you can see, there's a pretty strong juxtaposition in here. The flower pot and the house over here are the same size. In our usual conception, the house should be much bigger than the flower pot, but in observation, it is the same size, which is a really interesting juxtaposition. And juxtaposition in your artwork like this can make your, um, your work really strong. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So this is the very first layer. It's kind of like an underpainting. Um, because it's a pretty sunny day, pretty much everything has a kind of a sunshine color. So I'm adding this very watery layer of lemon yellow. First layer, especially this kind of underpainting, just keep it quite watery and transparent. Just focusing on the sunshine color for now. And now I'm using this leftover green mixed with blue for the road and for the sky, cerulean blue. For the grass, this is the first layer of uh, radiant green and mix of yellow. Some green for the pot of flowers. So I never really use black to paint black objects. For this flower pot, I mixed with, um, purple and green and ultramarine blue to mix my own black, which is a really dark kind of purple. Quickly adding a quick gray layer for the balcony rails. 
and another layer of more medium yellow for the chrysanthemums and the green leaves in between very thin green mixed with yellow using smaller brush strokes compared to the first layer And painting another layer for the grass and also the trees on the other side of the street using pretty much the same kind of mix, varying green and yellow. Mixing in more yellow to the varying green is going to result in a more yellow green. So there are so many different shades of green that we can mix with just yellow and varying green. Painting the rooftops with brown. Blending in another layer of um, darker shade of green here and there. And another layer of gray. Again, I mix my own gray too using ultramarine blue, purple, and green. Add some more grass for the foreground. Paint the brown rim of the flower pot. Adding a little bit of shade color using the same color I use for the road for some parts of the houses. Adding an even darker shade of green by mixing a, li a little bit of brown into very thin green and yellow. Shade color for the house there using leftover gray. And keep adding more little brush strokes of shade around the house structures. It's very important to give three dimension. Look at the house on the right hand side. One side looks gray because sunshine is not shining on it. And that house looks even more three dimensional. So now I'm adding some shade color for the balcony rails using leftover gray, which is um, ultramarine blue, purple, and green. So now this painting stage is closer to the end. I'm just adding more intense colors. For example, like darker browns, darker greens around the trees for the flower pot too. Less water, more paint pigment. But not for every single area. Only some areas should be more intense so it gives more contrast. So now I'm using these loose broken brush strokes to paint the leaves for the tree on the foreground right outside the balcony rails. A lot of leaves covering, almost covering these two houses. So being aware, not adding too much because I don't want to cover those two houses too much with the leaves. Keep it light too more transparent and for this stage I'm also paying more attention to um, the small gaps as, as you can see there are a lot of little gaps between different parts of each thing for example in between the balcony rails in between the flowers and leaves on this pot and also in between the tree branches there are a lot of uh, little areas to, uh, to mend still. Here, this is pretty much the uh, final polish. Sometimes it's hard to decide when to stop painting. So now I'm pretty just adding, intensifying some darker shade areas to create a little bit more stronger contrast. All right, I think that's enough details. So here is my finished sketch. So I spent about 45 minutes before dinner is ready to draw and paint this scenery. So I think we can learn a lot by sketching from ordinary sceneries without any um, ideal compositions or other ideal elements. And see you in the next video of how I create on this art journal page.